I'm here this morning to interview Jackson Beck, author and history enthusiast. Jackson, before we move on to your novels, what prompted you to take up writing? I think it was actually reading that prompted me to do that, because I was a very keen reader when I was a youngster. And um, I actually started a novel when I was 15 years old. I never finished it, but I started it. And it's gone on from there, really, from when I was at work and I was employed. I was writing newsletters and things like that. And then I did a biography uh, for a friend of mine. And I thought, well, now it's time to start, to start writing properly. So starting with your first novel, The Sanctuary Cipher, how did this idea actually come to fruition? I have an interest in history and archaeology. And at the time, I was going around a number of the local churches and I went to St Oswald's Church at Winnick in Warrington and I was welcomed with open arms and I got a bit more involved and when I found out about the history within the church where the church lies um, that's where the story started. Now your second novel, Cabin in the Clouds, has a totally different complexion. Why the considerable change in style and how did the Nathan Mason character come about? Okay, so in the 1980s I uh, served in the Metropolitan Police in London for five years. Mm -hmm. So I gained considerable experience and knowledge uh, during those years. I thought it was time that I used some of that knowledge and, and somehow included them into, into my writing. You mentioned earlier that all three of your novels have a connection to St Oswald's Church in Winnick, Warrington. What's the link in Cabin in the Clouds? OK, within the church, in the Lee Chapel... Uh, there's a memorial to a young lady called Ellen Turner. And unfortunately she died aged 19 uh, in childbirth. But when I did more research into Ellen, I found out that many years earlier she had been kidnapped from her school in Liverpool. She was only 15 years old uh, and she was taken to Scotland by two brothers, the Wakefield brothers. Um, Edward Wakefield forcibly married her and I followed the, the research through and I followed the, the Wakefield brothers to find out what happened to them. They served three years uh, in, in Preston Prison each before they made good to uh, New Zealand. In fact, they started the New Zealand Company. Um, so their life progressed and they were very, very successful in settling people in New Zealand, dealing with the indigenous people. But during the research, I found out that uh, on one occasion, uh, the ship that Edward was on was going up the, uh, the west coast of the North Island of New Zealand. Uh, it sprung a leak and I had to pull in uh, an urgent, basically pull into the, to the to harbour. And they had to start offloading the, or jettisoning the load to keep the, the boat afloat. Now, they would have been jettisoning... Uh, shotguns, uh, musket balls, black powder, clothes, shoes, all the type of things that they would use to deal with the indigenous people and to, to make money. But also, I believe that there was gold on board. And I think that the gold was also jettisoned. And the gold reappears in the 1960s. And that's where the story starts. So your third novel, Nightfall in Famagusta, which is the second featuring Nathan Mason, is based in Cyprus. Why is that? I do love Cyprus. I adore the place. I've, I've been going there for many, many years. 
And this was an opportunity, really, to introduce Cyprus into my writing. And Nathan Mason was the perfect character to introduce into this book. Um, also, whilst doing more research at the church, I found out that during the war in 1973-74 in Cyprus, a number of orphaned children were welcomed in to the church at Winnick. So that definitely set me off then. I definitely had to write about Cyprus. Are there other novels planned? And do they include Nathan Mason? Nathan's having a break at the moment. He's newly married to Loretta. Mm -hmm. um, so he's having a break. I think he will be back in 2024. And what are you working on at the moment? Another novel uh, based in Cyprus, but this time it's about a brother and sister who unfortunately lose uh, their parents due to the Covid outbreak. And when the estate is finally settled and the grieving is over, they decide to go and pay homage in Cyprus where they all used to go as a family when they were younger. And when they get there, they start to bring back memories of the good old days, and they're happy. The sun's out, it's a lovely hotel. What could go wrong? Now I know that you like to come here to Gladstone's Library in Harden, but are there any other places that inspire you? Well, believe it or not, St Oswald's Church at Winnick in Warrington, I spend a lot of time there. Yeah. I like to go there in the evening because it's nice and quiet and I can sit there and concentrate. Um, I do a lot of writing at home as well, and I also like to write while I'm away on holiday, believe it or not. I tend to spend the mornings on my laptop and the afternoons on the sunbed. have any tips for anyone who's considering writing? If you have a good imagination, but more importantly you have the time, find yourself some nice quiet places and go for it. Give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. Jackson, who are your favourite authors? I like some of the old classics like Umberto Eco or the Bronte Sisters. But more modern day, I would say uh, Louise Candlish, Caroline England, Lisa Jewell, C.J. Sampson, to name just a few. But it's changing all the time. As new books come out, they become favourite. So it's changing. Well, I have to say it's been a pleasure, Jackson, to sit here and interview you today, and hopefully we can work together again in the future. Uh, likewise, I've enjoyed it very much so, and I'd love for us to work again together in the future. <laughs>